The story is about faith in so many ways. But then it says down here, skipping a few verses down, uh, it says in verse 31, it says, they suddenly recognize him. What was happening when they recognized him? Well, they were breaking bread together. Now Jesus had done this so much. He had hosted meals so much that the Pharisees actually referred to him as a glutton. He, he, he had gathered his disciples so much to, to celebrate and to break the bread, to bless it and break it. But maybe there was a reason for that. Maybe he wanted them to be able to get used to him doing that. He had even done it just four days earlier with his 12 disciples. So now he does it, and all of a sudden they remember. That's right. That's what he does. Then, right after that, Jesus disappears. This is where I should be getting another, what? Right? Wait a second, Jesus. Hold on. We're having a mountaintop experience. We want you to hang out for a while. Be with us. Stay. But again, this is the, this is the nature of faith. We, we live in a time now between the resurrection and before the end of the age where Jesus will have that meal and where we will get to see Him face to face. But, but between now and then, we only get glimpses. And sometimes it's hard. I guess I would just sum it up to say it this way. Jesus doesn't always give us what we want in this time. But what He gives us is what He needs to build His kingdom. And it worked. Didn't it? It was enough. Because what happens? The disciples turn around and they go back to Jerusalem and I've thought about what this you know how much time did this trip take compared to the trip from Jerusalem to Emmaus I'm thinking about a third of the time right I think they were so filled with joy and so excited that they had happy feet right and they just went back to Jerusalem. Why? Because they had a story to tell. That they, they now lived in a time in which they knew that death had been defeated. And that God was now keeping His promises. The promises that He has made through the prophets. I will turn your mourning into dancing. They knew that now was that time. And they were excited so they went back to Jerusalem with their story. Turns out the disciples that they met there were telling the same story. The story of the resurrection. This story of the road to Emmaus is such an incredible story. It's, it's a story that gives us hope, that helps us understand how to live life now between the between the resurrection and the end of the age. It's a story that tells, teaches us how to be a church. It's a story that teaches us how to see with the eyes of our heart. How does it do that? Well, let me say it this way. Sometimes our eyes deceive us, don't they? Sometimes when we see something, we're not seeing everything. Especially when we're disappointed. And this story is about disappointment, isn't it? Think of how disappointed those disciples were as they were walking away from Jerusalem. Where I see that disappointment is when they say these words. We had hoped that He would be the one. Have you ever used those words, we had hoped? 
But this is where I usually hear these words as a pastor. When somebody's disappointed after a surgery that doesn't go the way we had hoped it would go. When an addiction returns and we say we had hoped that this would be the last time. When a relationship breaks up, we had hoped that it would work out. Sometimes faith is disappointing. Sometimes we pray and it doesn't seem like our, our prayers get answered and we say we had hoped. <coughs> but even in those times, this story teaches us that maybe more is going on than we are able to see. That, that, that God is present even when we are sad and hurting. And if we could just see with the eyes of our heart, we might understand. Here's the thing about chiastic structure. I'm, I'm just going to point this out right here. When you, are, when you discover that the storyteller is using chiastic structure to tell the story, what you need to do is look for the middle, which in this situation would be right here between C1 and C2. Everybody who knew how to use chiastic structure back then would look there to figure out what's the point that the storyteller is trying to make. What happens between verse 16 and verse 31? Two things. First is that Jesus explains the scripture to the disciples. That would be the word. Jesus explains to them, who already knew the scripture, that there are places within the the, the Moses, that's the first five books of the Bible, and the prophets, that's the rest, that the Messiah had to suffer before he would enter his glory. He explains to them why it is that Jesus had to go to the cross. That is the word. And then the other thing that happens, what's the other thing that happens? I'll give you a clue. What happens? They break bread. They break bread. Sorry you can't see this. It's wonderful. <laughs> that would be the meal. Word, or as Lutherans often say, sacrament. Word and meal, word and sacrament. Do you ever wonder why it is that we gather every week and do the same thing? What do we do? We gather in this room and we hear the word. Why do we do that? And then every once in a while we also, we have a meal together. Do you know why? It's so that we can learn. So that we can learn to see with the eyes of our heart. So, so that we, having been beaten up the other six days of the week, can go back and get some perspective and realize that God is indeed at work even when we are struggling, even when we don't see Him work. Even when our prayers don't get answered, God is there and He is working and He loves us. And we get to see it as we hear the Word being read and as we eat together as a community. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for you gather us. We we don't, sometimes we don't even realize that, but you bring us here so that we can hear your word and be shaped and formed and we can eat with you at the meal and with each other. Fill us this day, Lord, with your mysterious Holy Spirit that we may return from this place with joy. Amen.